Greetings, honorable men of God and men in general, in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I just want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity that has been granted to me to share uh, what God has laid in my heart uh, on this interesting topic that I've been given with the men out there. The topic that has been given to me is men needs to stand in the gap for their families and how can we do it as men. My name is Pastor Sipo Mashangu and I'm from the United Apostolic Faith Church in South Africa and I just want to thank God for this wonderful opportunity. Maybe before I um, share what God has laid in my heart, uh, let me invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before your throne and we thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have given us together in this manner, O Lord. Father, I pray that you cover me with your anointing and your glory. And Father, I pray that you be with me every word that I will speak. Let it not be from my intellect, but let it be from you, O Lord, as my Father. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. May we open our Bibles in the book of 1 Kings chapter 2 and we will read verse 2 in the New King James Version. 1 Kings chapter 2 verse 2 reads thus, I go the way of all the earth. Be strong, therefore, and prove yourself a man. Amen. This scripture, as we are reading in this book, you will realize that David was on his deathbed and he gave his son Solomon some very important instructions here. And he said to Solomon, he is going away of all the earth. Be thou strong, therefore, as a man and show yourself a man. In other words, be a man. He was saying to Solomon, he must become or he must be a man. In the common English Bible, it says, be strong and be a man. Be strong and be a man. David tells Solomon here that um, as a man, how must he handle himself? As a man, how must he keep himself? What things that he needs to do? How can he conduct his life as a man? And when you read verse 3, let's read verse 3. It says, keep the charge of the Lord your God to walk in his ways, to keep his statutes, his commandments, his judgments, and his testimonies as it is written in the laws of Moses, that you may prosper in all that you do wherever you turn. That is 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 3. Now, if you want to be a real man, you need to keep the commandments of God. You need to keep the commands that God gives you in his word, for you to become a real man. Now, the Lord is looking for real men to be leaders in his church. The Lord is looking for real men to be leaders in their homes, in their families, wherever they are, in their communities. The Lord is looking for the men who will stand in the gap. Men who can stand in the gap in their families or for their families, regardless of what is happening in our lives and in our time. Now, we all know and we need to all understand that the man is the head of the family. In other words, when you are a man, you become the leader of your home or you have to be the leader of your home. The man is his responsibility to teach his children concerning the duties of the Lord. As a man, you are responsible that you need to teach your children whatever duties they need to do in the house of the Lord, in their lives, here on earth, as instructed by the Lord. 
as a man, you need to train your children in the ways of the Lord. And the book, in the book of Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, that we all know says that, that train up a child in the way that he should go so that when he becomes old, he or she may not depart from those trainings or from those teachings. So it is important that we know that as men, we need to teach our children in the way that they should go, in the ways of the Lord. And also, we are to discipline our children. It is written in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 24, that we need to instill a good discipline to our children as men. Now, the Lord is looking for men who will have the sound doctrine, men who will make sure that they not following false doctrine, men who will stand in the gap in the church, in their homes, in their communities, wherever where they are. Now, my question to all of us right now is, will you find any of that man in us? Are you that kind of man that the Lord is looking for in your life? Are you that kind of man who can stand in the gap as the Lord is looking for that, for that man? Are you that real man of God? Will you prepare yourself to become that real man of God? Will the Lord find real men in you? Will he find you as a real man when God is looking and searching for that real man? We really need to reform our societies. We need to reform ourselves, especially as men. We need to reform ourselves so that we become these real men that God is looking for. Yes. There are many challenges that men are faced with within our societies, within our communities, in our homes. So many challenges. But equally so, there are many challenges that men are causing in our societies. That men become brutal in our societies because of the challenges that are caused by us as men. In this world, we are now suffering from the gender-based violence. Men abusing women, men abusing children. We also have what we call religious abuse, where men abuse their wives, their children emotionally. They abuse them spiritually. They abuse them physically. And in all manner that you can think of, and I call that religious abuse, because sometimes these men who do, who do these abuse sit in the pews of the church they become men of God, young and old. In the world right now, we're sitting in the world that is faced with crime and corruption. And we find that men are sitting in prison cells. Prisons are overflowing. Men are stuck there because of crime and corruption. We find that we are living in the time where men abuse alcohol and drug in a manner that has never been seen before. Men are always out of their minds because of the abuse of alcohol and drugs. Now, it is very important that we need to know, particularly as married men, that when you are a married man and you need to be standing in the gap in your family, and you become a married man who is very abusive in your family, the book or the Bible in the book of 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, I want us to read it. It says this, 1 Peter Chapter 3, verse 7 reads thus. Husbands, likewise, dwell with them, referring to you, your wives, with understanding, giving honor to your wives as to the weaker vessel and as being hers together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. I always say this to men, when you are a man that is abusive, when you are a man that is not standing appropriately in the gap between yourself and the family and God, and you stand in the gap as a man, and you are a man who's constantly abusing your family emotionally, spiritually, physically, the word of God here says, your prayers are hindered. A prayers of an abusive man do not reach the Lord. Your prayers are hindered. Now, the devil is so much against families. 
the devil is so much against the head of families, which are men, because he knows and he understands the strength that may come from a solid, sober family. The devil is aware that when our families are healthy, when our families are at peace, when our families are strong, we become a very strong nation of God and we become very dangerous to the devil. And he knows the power that us as men we are holding. Hence, he is attacking in every manner to distract men from being or playing the role that they supposed to be playing. Now, we know it's a fact. In most places you go, most countries you go, that most dads and husbands today are missing in action. They might be physically there. They are alive. They are even living with their families at home. But they are completely missing in all of the ways their kids and their spouses need them. In other words, these people are there, but they are missing in action. Why? What causes that? Why? And I believe that most men, because we did not grow up with our dads, or somehow we did not have a male figure that was modeled to us, and we don't have someone that we can look to them as real men. We ended up not knowing how to become real men. Thankfully now, the Bible is teaching us or is giving us all the guidance that we need to say, how can we become real men? How can we stand in the gap? What does it mean to be a real man? The Bible is clear. The Bible shows us that God has made us men and also women in equal design. In the manner that we are designed, we are designed in an equal manner. Obviously, with different order of complement to one another, with different order of responsibilities as well. Now, I want to talk to married men for a second. That as married men, there are a couple of things that we need to understand. Number one. We need to submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. When I say one another, I mean to our spouses. And that's where the book, if you read the book of Ephesians chapter 5, verse 21 says, Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Now, our role as husbands and as our wives' roles is to submit to Christ first and also mutually submitting to one another. Submitting or being subject to one another means to desire to get less of what we deserve. It actually means putting someone else first, the needs of someone else first. And here there is no abuse. There is nothing that is out of line. It's ensuring that you show care and love to one another first. And this mutual submission is a picture of two people who say, I want uh, what's best for the other party. I want what's best for my wife. And your wife says the same thing. I want what's best for my husband. Amen. Now, secondly, after we've submitted to one another out of reverence for Christ, in the book of Ephesians, if you read chapter 5, Verse 25, 28, and verse 30. It says, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. So husbands ought to also love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his own wife loves himself. When you love your wife, you love yourself. For no one ever hated his own flesh but nourishes and cherishes it. Jesus, or our Christ, Lord and Savior, also loves the church. We need to love our wives as husbands. So that's the instruction that is given to us. That's the role that we have as husbands. It says we need to love our wives and we must love them by nourishing and cherishing them. What do we mean when we say nourish? 
Nourish means to provide for them, to be devoted to our wives, and to help them to become the persons that God intended for them to become. Amen. What do we mean by cherishing them? It means we need to protect them and help them to feel safe and secure around us. So for us to play or to stand in the gap in our families, we must make sure that we provide for our families, we become devoted to our families, we help our families to become what God has intended them to become, and also we need to protect them and make them to feel safe and secure around us as men. And that's the role of men. And I know we're living in the time where uh, the role of men is evolving. You know, if, if you speak to men this day, as compared to men in the previous years, you'll see that the role of men is evolving. But there are critical things that never change. Number one, that you need to be a provider for you to stand in the gap. And becoming a provider is not only talking in a monetary form or in a financial manner only. It talks about being emotionally there, be spiritually there, be physically there, be mentally there in your family. And that's how you provide to your family. You need to be a protector. Protect your family. Protect your children. Amen. Doesn't mean going out and beat every guy who beats your wife or beats your children or speaks evil to your family. But when it says protect, it means you must protect the way of life. And guard against any threats to the things that you and your family value in your life. And you need to be a leader in your family. We know that, let me tell you this. There is nothing biblically that says marriage is 50-50. Marriage is not 50-50. Marriage is a 100%, 100-100 partnership. Everyone must bring 100% commitment into their marriages so that you live happily. We all need to bring 100% in order for our marriages to strive. And we need to be teachers as well. And that's how we stand in the gap. We need to be teachers. Teach our children. Teach those who are around us. Now, in, in, in closing, what do we need to do as men to stand in the gap within our families? We need to provide. We need to protect. We need to be leaders. And we need to teach. And when we grasp those four key things, we'll be able to stand in the gap within our families. We'll be able to know that that's the purpose that God created us men to become. I thank you. Join me as we pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for speaking to us. And bless each and every one of us on this wonderful day. We pray for your glory and your anointing upon us. Lord, I pray for each and every man who will be hearing this message, that let your anointing and your blessing be upon them, O Lord. And Father, let this message nourish them and strengthen them. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. I thank you and God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Amen. God bless.